it's fall. The geese are headed south, and it's time for you to hit the woods. So button things up, find where they hide, and pattern the deer you seek. Come into Cabela's Great Outdoor Days and save over 20% on Herder's Select Grade Handgun Ammo. Save $180 after mail-in rebate on Walther PPS M2 pistols with instant savings of $80. And get a Vortex Diamondback 3.5 to 10 by 50 V-Plex rifle scope, just $149.99. Shop in-store and at Cabela's.com. Blog Talk Radio. Well, hey, everybody. I was just looking outside an hour ago. I don't know if you all are from Wisconsin, which you're probably not. And I'm looking outside and I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, it's just the loveliest day. It started off all gloomy. And now all of a sudden it was all sunshiny two hours ago. But I just looked look out the window. I'm in my living room actually doing the show today. And lo and behold, shocker. It's overcast once again. Maybe it's just me, but um, I think we're living in hell, basically, because we get cold, then we get nice, then we get cold, then we get nice again, and then we get snow and no snow. Oh, I shouldn't even said the S word. So, hey, folks, from whatever side of the planet that you're on today, thanks so much for listening in. Um, I want to say a special quick note about tomorrow's show. Um, I mentioned that it was tentative, so I'm still kind of holding on that as far as whether or not we're going to be having a guest. I'm tentatively scheduled to have the director of the movie called Parrot heads, excuse me, on my show tomorrow, and that's at 1 o'clock Central Standard Time. And he is a gentleman by the name of Bryce is the name of the director, actually. I met this person through a publicist friend of mine, and I'm so excited about it because obviously one of the coolest things uh, first off, is that he did a documentary about fans, not so much necessarily about the obvious person, which is, of course, these are Jimmy Buffett fans, which are called Parrot Heads. But the fact is he threw it out there and did a fan movie, traveled to 35 different cities and towns to be able to do this. I've always admired uh, the uh, the originality and the creativity involved with going to all sorts of different places and, and having all sorts of adventures, etc., it's interesting um, to me, the fact that he would tend to focus all of his attention on not Jimmy Buffett necessarily. Not that we don't love you, because I absolutely do, but it's very, very cool. I always have such respect for people that kind of go outside the boundaries and the norm to get the job done. So congratulations, Bryce. Hopefully, like I said, we'll get a chance to get him on the show tomorrow. That'd be 1 o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, obviously, today, uh, Leonardo Corbucci is coming on. I hope I said that right. He is an actual director from Italy. First of all, I'm excited because of the fact that that's like my dream come true to go to Italy. Second of all, he's done, in fact, I want to say 13 projects he's written, 18 he's actually directed, been to the Cannes Film Festival, another place that I've never been to. Who does not envy something like that, right? That's awesome. So um, I'm excited. We're going to be talking about his new project that he has coming out, actually, that he has a uh, fundraiser, going, or I should say Indiegogo campaign for, called Cyborgs, actually. It's a sci-fi TV series. So we're just waiting for him to get on the line so we can chit-chat with him. I um, want to mention a couple quick things relative to my own endeavors in case you were blind or didn't notice this. Obviously, my son's comic book is going to be it's pencil to be printed and done and completely available currently, obviously. And, and to those that have listening in now that don't know the backstory, my son Kerwin was a frontal lobal seizure patient for a period of three years. Um, during that time, he was diagnosed right around the year of eight, eight and a half. He was diagnosed with frontal lobal seizure at the Children's Hospital. So he spent three years in treatment. Well, during the course of those three years, uh, and, and what's really pertinent about this is this was done without my hoaxing, without my influence, etc. He opted just literally to say, you know what, I'm going to make a good out of this. And so he decided to create this comic book. He wrote the whole story himself. He illustrated the main character himself. And then mom spent an arduous, I want to say, year going um, literally – between artist to artist, artist, literally we went through almost four artists. So we finally put out a Craigslist dad, found this lovely woman who lives in Michigan, Joanna Rogers, who you'll be finding more about because she'll be coming on my show. Hopefully I can manage to land her another date or two because I'd love to. She's a delightful woman. So she literally put together within a course of maybe five weeks, literally put all the panels together, worked with my son, Kerwin. Um, literally, they were just terrific together, and now it's come up with almost the entire version. I think Kerwin has to make just some small changes. The color's been added, color cover's there, so we're terribly excited. And so now we're at the point in time where um, regular adult people are going to be able to purchase it um, starting, I want to say, next week. Like I said, the end of next week or so. And and take a look on the page. Sergeant Seizure and Dr. Eva Kuku is the name of the comic book. I'll be posting up. There will be a total of, you've been invited to, I think, seven different libraries, ten different bookstores. We're going to be at the Wichita, Kansas Comic Con. And I'll give you more information on that later. But without further ado, Leonardo is calling in. So let's get an opportunity to get him on the line. So you're talking about his project. 
Hello. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi. Oh, my gosh, it's you, the Italian director guy. Hello. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you. I am. Yeah, from, I really am. All right. Yeah, from my spaghetti accent, you can tell I'm Italian, huh? I was just going to say, because I saw another interview, and I was just going to say to you, he's probably going to talk to me in that spaghetti English that he talks about all the time, because you had, you had suffered that in another interview. And I think it's adorable, so we have to talk about that first. That's, that's my number one bucket list thing. So you must tell me, you must advise me as to, because I know you were born in Rome, but nowadays it's in 2017, so I'm not sure if you've been back. So tell us a little bit about your native country, Italy, because it's the most beautiful place in the world, isn't it? Oh, I love it. I love, yeah, for holidays, it's, it's a beautiful place, really. There, there are places like Venice and Rome, and there are, like, beautiful places where to ski. The seaside is all around because it's a peninsula. But for work, it, it's really difficult. It's not an easy country really? where to work. Yeah, huh. unfortunately, yes. Because, um, let's say, bureaucracy is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Whatever you need to do, you need to go to that office that will send you in the other office that will go in the other office that they work two hours every week. And then you need to know somebody. Otherwise, there is a line that you it's, it's, it's very difficult to do everything, everything that you need to do. It's, it's like a huh. mission in Italy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is, See, I would have thought. Yeah. I'm surprised because that's so – the arts and culture environment in Italy, I would imagine, is just ripe and rich. And that's why I guess I, w I thought, oh, my God, what a beautiful place to work, especially in your line of work. I would think filming there, et cetera, would be so much easier and so much nicer. I know. And, and it's like a paradox that organization is our problem. Come on. We come mm -hmm. from Roman Empire that basically – introduce organization to the world. <laughs> what happened right. after that? <laughs> I don't know. know. I've never been there yet. I don't <laughs> Well, that's okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Well, obviously it's still staying on my bucket list. It's like my number one place to go. I just think it's so romantic and I'm a wine drinker and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. who doesn't like an Italian Beautiful. person? Exactly. So I have to ask you because you're probably very good at this. So if I, as in me, want to go out and I want to learn what I call the Italian for dummies version, because I do not know how to speak Italian, but I have a huge inkling to want to do this. So tell me, is there, is there such a thing as three easy steps, let's say, to learn Italian, or am I just going to have to struggle and practice, practice, practice? Or do you oh, even yeah, speak? For sure, I, for sure. It's, it's a just move your hand and you're <laughs> halfway there, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> okay, and I've then, seen that and before. Then smile. And then smile, and, and you will fix everything, really. Yeah, it's, it's an easy really? language. And people, yeah, it's, it's a very easy language. Because, you know, whatever you write, you say in Italian. So if I give you a book, you can actually learn Italian. This doesn't happen with a lot of other languages, like English. You know, in English, you need to mm -hmm. listen one word before you're able to repeat it. Because if you right. read it and you never heard the word before, it's impossible for you to understand the pronunciation of the word. So mm -hmm. in Italian, whatever you read in a book is exactly the same way you're, you're saying that word. So I think it's pretty quickly and easy to, to learn. It's a language that is gotcha. easy. The verbs are, are, are a lot of verbs like conjugation, you know. We have a lot of forms mm -hmm. of ending the verbs that come from Latin. But... Uh, after a while, you can you can you can use the same time of the of the verb, so it, it will be easy to speak. I think it's a pretty ah. easy language. Yeah. Okay, and I you got gotta it. go Good. in because... places like Venice, you know, and get lost in the canals. I don't think so. There is ah. more more romantic place like that. It's, it's unbelievable, Aww. really unbelievable. Oh, yeah. that's so nice. How sweet. Look at this. See, I'm already getting excited about going. Okay, good. Well, now, so that covers my little Italian thing there. Now, uh, have you, yes. in fact, ever – I looked through your IMDb profile, but obviously, of course, that doesn't tell me some of the things you want to know. Like, have you actually shot anything in Italy itself, like maybe in your early career, et cetera? I was just curious to ask yeah, about yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, after, yeah. After film school, we, we did a feature film in 16 millimeters in film that was mm -hmm. a Cinecittà story. So Cinecittà okay. is, are the studios that are right there in Rome. And it's a very mm -hmm. sacral place because it's where Fellini, you know, Antonioni, Fellini did La Dolce Vita, Eight and a Half. Mm -hmm. So our masters did their movies right there. So when you enter in these studios, for us, there is a kind of magic because pieces of this kind of set 
from the past to our left and right. So it's like a museum film studio, you know. Oh, it's beautiful. Nice. So I remember I we had, after the film school, we tried to pitch this movie idea to the studios. And they didn't say no. They didn't say yes. They were thinking about it. But at the same moment that they were thinking about it, we start shoot. <laughs> oh my gosh! Really? It was a crazy experience. Yeah, I was like twenty twenty one, I think, back in the time. And we managed sure. to finish the feature film. That was was a, an adventure, you know. And it was a I was a school project. I was not supposed to do a feature film, but a short film. But I did a, a feature film anyway. And I get in trouble for that, of course, because I, I didn't do what the school was was telling me to do. But in the end, you know uh-huh. what? The school published the movie in the movie theater, and they did two hundred fifty thousand dollar profit. That was the beginning of my career, right there. Wow! So they complained that I didn't do the right thing, but they end up to make money, so they shut up basically. Oh sure. No, I understand. I do. I totally get it, actually. Okay, I noticed this, and this is pretty cool, obviously, because not every director gets an opportunity, and or actor, or otherwise, but you have been to the Cannes Film Festival. Now, that's pretty yeah. high up in there. It's kind of like going to Sundance, etc. So talk a bit about, because a lot of the people that listen to my show are in the business or want to be where you are right now. So talk a bit about that experience. Obviously, Cannes is a little higher up there, you know, status-wise, and, and the people that show up there are different. So tell me what you learned from that experience. What was that like? Was it intimidating? Was it um, intellectually stimulating, meaning teaching you things, meaning networking, perspective, things like that? Because take us into that realm a little bit, because most of us have not gotten there yet. Beautiful. So yes, we we did. Uh, I did a, a um, feature film documentary called Legendary AD, mm-hmm. and then we've been accepted to the Doc Corner. It was called so a corner where documentaries were shown, and it was beautiful. And I love Cannes. Personally, I really really like Cannes. It's my favorite uh, festival in the world. I really I'm really? a big fan of the festival. Yes. And, you, you know, it, 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 for me, it's a little bit strange. Over here, we have the Oscars, but it's, it's a little bit weird because we give Foreigner best feature film. That, for me, doesn't make any sense because Foreigner movies have the same story and the same topic of, of, of American movies. So I don't understand why we should have a, a, a different category for movies that are not English or American. You know, in, instead, can right. give the prizes to everybody. You know, best director, best film, best acting. They go to a movie that they can be American, Iranian, Spanish, Iceland, Japanese, doesn't really matter. So I like this of Cannes Film Festival. That is a really, really award film festival. But for me, the most interesting part is this. So over here in Los Angeles, there are 90% of the production company studios that I am interested in to be involved with, right? If you try mm. to have a meeting here in Los Angeles, it's almost impossible. And this is because the city is saturated with people that want to make movies or be involved with movies. So these very famous production companies or studios are very protective because they can't listen every single voice, all right? So when Mm -hmm. I go to Cannes Film Festival, (laughs) there are all the Americans that I can find here in L.A., but because they're in the other side of the continent, they can listen to me. <laughs> ah, so the paradox I is, see. The paradox is I cross the continent, I cross the world to speak with companies that I have across the street. Oh, my and God. Not so wild. <laughs> this that is, is exactly wild. What happened, you know, because, because in Cannes, there are less people that they are not serious about the business. Because if you are going to Cannes, take the ticket, you get involved with take a pass. That means you are a serious filmmaker. So otherwise, you will not do it. So right. they apply that if you're an American in Cannes, you are not one of these people over here that just try to, to, to enter in the business with, with you know, one feet like this. So they're, they're gotcha. listening you more carefully. So for me, this, this was the biggest surprise. You know, I can finally meet studios and production company, American, in my city, in Cannes Film Festival. Unbelievable. Uh, oh, I bet. And more importantly, obviously, of course, it, like I said, the networking component of it, but did you also have time to, to check out some of the other films that are not yours? I know a lot of people go to the festival 
and they worked at circuit doing their own projects so much that oftentimes they missed out on the cinematic portion of things. Were you able to catch anything really good, or is there a tip off you can give us some director out there that you're like, you know what, he's a flash, he's awesome, or she, I should say, whichever, anything that you that caught your eye? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Because when you go to Cannes, you basically you live in the festival. There are like, uh, let's see, twelve blocks, and everybody are reading the festival there are movies projected every single time there are corner with new activity like vr or maybe sci-fi corner dog corner and then there is something gotcha. called film market that is another badge and you go there and there are all the distributors and producers of all around the world so when you go to Cannes, you really you enter in a, in a cinema zone I think more than everywhere else, even more than Sundance, because Sundance is a little bit smaller, it's less glamour, but he was better for independent. Now I don't think so it's better for independent, but I think mm-hmm. Cannes now is the number one market where, where, where you go. So I had a few times to see movies, and I tried to watch more as possible. The mm-hmm. last uh, time I went, that was last year, 2016, my favorite surprise was a movie called the Neon Demon. The Neon hmm. Demon. That was okay. the same, is the same director that did Drive with Ryan Gosling. Oh. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. I do. Same I do. Director, yeah, same director did another movie called Neon Demon and was shot in Los Angeles. And that was a surprise. I was really surprised about the movie, that the director is talented. So for me, that was the best movie that I watched at Cannes Film Festival in 2016. But also, uh, I like the, um, there was the Iranian movie that then, after that, won the Oscar. He won a mm-hmm. prize in Cannes, I think, Best Actor. He was The, the yep. Salesman, is the name of, of the movie. And okay. I really liked that movie as well. Yeah, yeah. These were my, nice. my two surprises, let's say. Uh, and I, I got gotcha. I, I, I a little bit more time to, to watch, like, documentaries in the dog corner where we were selected. And they were beautiful independent documentaries. And, and, mm-hmm. and it's also a, a, an experience to watch a lot of movies that they're struggling to find distribution. So you will, you will watch. Sometimes I see movies after five, six years that I watch it in, in Cannes. And I'm like, how is that possible that this movie found distribution only six years after the premiere in Cannes? But absolutely mm-hmm. possible. It's very often possible. So, Gotcha. Okay, I see what you mean. Now, here's a question, because again, this is for my listening audience, of course. I know that back in 2010, you became part of the Directors Guild of America. So I have a ton of friends who are obviously in SAG, which is, of course, Screen Screen Actors Guild. So, of course, I know. I want you to talk a little bit about, because, like, for instance, my SAG friends obviously get access to and get exposure to events, people, things like that, that normally you wouldn't by being part of the Guild. So if we have somebody out there who's an indie director that's listening and et cetera, you, as being part of the Guild, Guild of America. Can you talk to us about the benefits or the bonuses and why you decided to be part of the Guild versus just staying on your own um, tread, so to speak? Because some people swear by the union and the Guild and say you have to, you have to do this. It, it offers Absolutely. you premium. So talk about that a little bit, if you would. Absolutely, yes. I am a member of, um, of SAG as well and WGA, okay. that is the one of screenwriting. And right. I'm, in my life, I'm not really a big fan of unions to say that unions in movies are the best. And especially really? the DGA. The DGA is my favorite u- union, and I love it, love it, love it so much. Hmm. The reason is wow. because we are really a big family. The feeling is that you are part of a group of filmmakers that are very united. And I didn't mm-hmm. feel that on the on the... SAG, you know, when entering SAG, I'm like, oh, welcome, congratulations, you're part of the ocean of SAG people in the world, you know, and you actually mm-hmm. enter in the SAG because, because of contract uh, issues, I think, you know, you're obligated in some cases. And WGA, gotcha. you enter in the union because you want to, you know, you want to defend yourself as a screenwriter with a production company or a TV show that without you to be in a union, they will they will, um, I don't know, they will do something that, that they will not do if you're a union. But the DGA mm-hmm. is completely different. It's really the feeling of being part of a group, of a group of passionate people, and there are a lot of meetings, 
like um, I was looking for interview an uh, Asian uh, first AD for my documentary Legendary AD. So I mm -hmm. I enter in the Asian um, diversity group for ask if they went help me at the DGA, and they were wonderful. They were the best, and they give me all the connection. And then sometimes there is a, there is a um, a meeting where the DGA is judging some other directors that did something not really good, and and so like a court, they call the filmmakers. They ask them why they did that, and then all together we decide what to do. It's 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 like the Jedi Council, really. <laughs> <laughs> well put. That's actually really well done, actually. I'm Have so, you... I'm so happy and proud to be part of it. I think it's one of the most beautiful oh, things that happened to me uh, recently. I really like it. And then, um, okay. um, rather than like psychological support. The reason why you enter is, first of all, the DGA fight all around the world to find out your um, your your movies and calculate your um, how do you call it the um, you know when when the movie is being shown somewhere else and for copyright you get residual. So it's actually oh, helping it. you on calculate residual. That that was very helpful for a, a couple of movies that I did. I never received okay. a penny. <laughs> But I start to 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 receive small checks. They were small, but at least was something, you know, thanks to the DGA. Sure. So that's very important. Gotcha. And then nice. uh, when you do contract, they they help you. Like for example, the distribution of legendary AD, the the mm -hmm. distribution contract was obligated to follow the DGA standards. And we did my distribution company, with the distribution company that we work with, that is Summer Hills. When he asked, are you part of any union? I'm saying, yeah, I'm part of DGA. So he couldn't really um, fight to don't make a DGA contract for distribution because he was obligated to, you know. And if he wasn't sure. obligated, I don't think so he will do a DGA standard contract because it's a little bit more on my side rather than his side. So I think it ah. helps also in this way that when you distribute your movie or when you work in TV or, or production company, they give you some minimum guarantees inside the union that that is much better than 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 not be part of DGA. So this, this, I gotcha. That poses an interesting question in terms of because you're part of the whole DGA thing, obviously. Here's another interesting question because this has been brought up before, obviously, too, from other people, etc. When you become part of the guild, as far as that goes, like, for instance, you've been directing and, and doing other things as well as writing, and I don't want to forget that. We'll go back to that, obviously. But here's what I want to mention as far as this goes. There are some people out there that are working in the indie circuit, including yourself, that oftentimes it's yep. not financially feasible for them to be part of a union, obviously, because, of course, you're taking away, as you know, when you make a film, you're taking yep. everything you have and putting into it, whether it's props, whether it's this, whether it's that. And so that's kind of the reason why I ask that in terms of, if a person's listening right now and they can't be part of the DGA, is there something that they can participate in that maybe is of a to a lesser or a lower level? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Meaning if they can't get the person the benefits from that, is there a way for them still to try to get some of those benefits? Because obviously nowadays, you know, con contract contractual work as far as being a director, you need to have your P's and Q's put together, you know, to protect yourself obviously too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there is a, the equivalent, that's funny because I was there yesterday, and the equivalent of independent is film independent. That is, there are the mm -hmm. same people that organize the Spirit Awards, and the Spirit Awards are the equivalent of independent filmmaking, basically of the Oscars. So if okay. you look for film independent, is a group that is open, and you can be part mm -hmm. of it, and you will... Um, you know, you will be part of a group that is very similar to DGA. DGA vote for DGA awards. That is very influential for the Oscars as well. And the film independent vote for the spirit awards. So I really think it's the equivalent of independent filmmaking. So, you you, you know, if people are interested, they should check it out. But okay. um, I think... Um, be be a director. It, 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 it's 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 very different from any other jobs in a set. I think, meaning that 
they they published, I think it was the, the, uh, the Hollywood Report or something like that, that, that directing is the most disposal um, and recycled uh, job in the set, meaning that mm-hmm. everybody can become a director, basically, you know. So if you if you're a screenwriter, you have an idea, you find the money, and, and you become a director, you can be an actor, a producer, really, an editor, or, or none of this, you know. The, the, the long story short is that a director, I know it's not romantic, but a director is mm. a person that found money to produce his movies. That's it. If I'm able to convince you to give me $20,000 to do a short film and we do that, I am a director. Because we can argue for years, but if you are not able to do that, you have beautiful ideas, but you will never make mm-hmm. it. You are not really a director. <laughs> so, no, I know exactly what the, you're talking about. You know, so a director is a very strange position, I think. And, and so for this reason, to be part of unions, to don't be part of unions, a group like filmmaker... Um, I don't think it's necessary, you know. Every single person will have a different way to produce their movies. Some people make beautiful short films and even beautiful independent films with no money at all. And when I say no money at all, I mean like maybe three, four thousand dollars of their own money. And they end up on festival, end up with prizes, and they start the career in this way. So mm-hmm. I don't think so for a director is necessary to enter in a in a union. But in your career, when is the time you may join some unions? And one of that is the BGA. When I started, mm-hmm. when I was 21, 22, for me, I don't think so was important to enter in the BGA at that point because I had, I was traveling all around the world. I was trying to make movies with no money. And also that was good for me. I have to make a movie with, with, with five million dollars, you know? There is mm-hmm. there is a, a path that you need to follow as a director. I don't really believe like like studio does that you can give like forty forty million dollars to a twenty two years old uh, man and say go uh, and make this movie, you know, like maybe sometime it's X Men or, or one of these big blockbusters. Because that young guy will not have enough feeling collected during the during the life to express himself of course you can do a movie that speaks about young people that's for sure Mm -hmm. i I, I agree with that if if you want to do a movie about teenagers maybe ask a teenager director is the best way to do it yes but you can't ask to do a family movie or a romance or a love story to a guy that is in the beginning of of his life because he Mm -hmm. will tell you only the feeling that he had until that point, you know. So he can give you one movie, but only one type, compared to another director with a lot of experience of life, that he can give you more experience that he collected in, in, in all his life. Uh, I hope I, I wasn't too long on, on this answer. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, that, that explains it quite clearly to me and hopefully to our listening audience. Um, uh, interesting question for you, because nowadays in the world 2017, I know, again, this also is another realm that's changed. You being a director and getting your projects out there, are you finding that in today's day, because the number of, uh, the number of venues for distribution out there has obviously climbed in the last five, even 10 years in terms of for directors and people out there, you don't necessarily have to be in Hollywood and have an established name to get something for distribution. So do you think in some ways with all these new platforms, it's gotten easier or has there just been a multitude of new platforms, but it's gotten harder to get distribution? You follow me? Absolutely easier. I think there really? is the reason better time of today to be a director. Today is the okay. best time of the history of this planet to be able to be a director. Believe me, in the past, more you go back was brutal, you know. To arrange, to make a movie was, was insane. There was only film, and you need to cut this film, and the sound is very hard to record, and you need to put together the sound with the film. And, and, and he, it was insane the way to, make, to do a movie. And then after you did a movie in the past, you need to talk to the distribution company 
that they were basically sharks. I remember my first movie was about Fidel Castro in Cuba, and distribution back in the time was TV, DVD, or cinema. That's it. So these people, they were able to do whatever they want. I remember my first contract, mm -hmm. I'm like, what happened with my movie? And they said, well, we distribute 20,000 DVDs, but our expense to do the DVD was like $20,000. And so far we sell only 200, 200 DVDs. So we didn't make any money. And forever this story was going on and on and on because there is no way to, 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 to check and control, you know. And mm -hmm. so today, first of all, the amount of projects and the amount of movies and the amount of TV shows, and I really want to underline TV shows because today – the best thing you can do for a director is a TV show. They become so cinematic, so cinematic, and they're not anymore like the 80 or the 90 where, I don't know, MacGyver that I love it, or, or the A-Team was an episode that starts and finish, and then the next episode have nothing to do with the previous one. Today, TV mm -hmm. show, they're like a novel, a long story, a comic book, that is divided by small episodes that they make so much sense together. So you have so much time to develop your characters. You have so much time to explain the story. You have so much mm -hmm. time to give back, back, you know, back information about your characters. For a director, it's, it's beautiful, you know. It's, it's like the best thing ever happened. And in the same way, they, you know, they, they used to be movies are for grow up, grown ups, and TV shows right. are for kids. Today mm -hmm. it's completely opposite. You know, TV I shows know. are for for grow ups because they're always violent and full of real feelings that kids cannot really understand. And the big <laughs> movies are, are Marvel things and stuff for for kids. So today is is, is the other way around. So going oh, back definitely. to the question, all these channels like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Studios, they need so much content that they're really making a TV show every two weeks. I don't know if you notice, but there is an interesting TV show, commercial, every two weeks. I can really? ca catch up as a, as a watcher about this, this TV show. I don't have the time to watch sure. all the TV show that I am interesting to. And this is my business, you know. I'm not a normal audience. <laughs> I need to watch the right. TV shows because it's my work, and I can't. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. So, and, and now, you know, when I go to speak with studios, because the studios, there is, a, there is a better phenomenon. There is a very interesting thing going on. The studios are afraid. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, the big studios huh. are afraid of this new phenomenon. They are afraid to lose the piece of the cake. So now the big studios are more open to try to invest in projects that are small in the beginning and they're going, growing, growing, and growing, and growing, because their formula gotcha. is not working anymore, you know? They need mm -hmm. to enter oh, sure. in, in this kind of TV shows. So right now, for the first time in my career, I can have a conversation with Universal, you know, Paramount, before it didn't happen, nice. because they were like, they oh, had that course. system to make movie and distribute movie, and they were very close. Today, instead, gotcha. because the competition is so high, they're obligated to open the door to new filmmakers. So I think for this reason that we have so much movies and TV shows, we need more directors, so it's better. Mm -hmm. And because it's so much easier to make movies, so much easier, you, have a, you need an idea, a good idea, and good actors, and you have a, you have a good movie, you know? In the past, we no, I did. Like and oh, of I agree. course, there are and... more people trying to make movies but there are more people trying that is democracy, so I love that. And at the same time, mm. there are more possibilities for everybody. So I think today is the best time to be a director ever in the history. Very nice. Well, and nice now that you brought that angle up, I have to ask this question because, of course, you were talking about the child angle. So let's talk about your son, Noah, because he's little. He's not quite four years old yet. So I'm curious, two different things. Obviously, of course, because he is a director's son, um, I'm thinking you probably have not done anything yet that he can watch, or has he seen anything, or does he grasp the concept of my daddy's a director? Because I'm guessing probably not, right? Because I saw his picture at the Oscar thing. That was him, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so, so I was curious I, about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
you know, I, I, I make movies, I make tests for movies, I make pilot, I make, you know, whatever I do, if I need a kid, for me, it's easier because there are so many paperwork, there are so many documents right. that you need, you need to speak with the parents. So if, if, I, if I have a position for a kid of his age, I'm going to put it in <laughs> just because oh, it's easier. Of course. <laughs> and in fact, in, <laughs> in this TV show, Cybox, he has a small part because I needed a, a kid of his age, so I put it in. He doesn't really oh, understand nice. what he's doing yet. For him, right. for him, you know, four years old, everything is a big game, so he doesn't know right. what he's doing. And he doesn't watch himself after. No, I, I don't show. Really? Sometimes we do. Yeah, sometimes we do some videos, and, and he wants to watch himself over and over and over because it's like fun. But he doesn't really right. understand uh, the video. He doesn't understand the difference between a video made by with the phone for for like a mm-hmm. joke or a video right. made in a set for serious. Got it. He doesn't understand gotcha. the difference yet. I got gotcha. So okay. I think a lot of times of directors, producer, actors, they become actors, director, and producer, DP as well, just because right. they're born there. So they, <laughs> you know, in the right moment, in the right place, you know, it's, it's literally like, oh, I need, an, I need a kid. Oh, you, you're here. You're my son. Let's do it. You know, I need a, a, a PA. You, I need a camera assistant. You. So mm-hmm. I think this is the reason why they... They follow their the path of the of the father and mother sometimes, not not all the time. Ah, I gotcha. Yeah. Now, does he ever come to you and say, "Hey, Dad, I want you to do something animated, or I want you to do something that I really like, or like, you know, hey, can you do something about the Avengers? You know what I mean? Because I remember that age, and I'm thinking, yeah. oh my God, he has this filmmaker that lives at home, and I bet he's like, Dad, can you do something for me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just because that that that's how they are at that age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, what I absolutely know what you mean. And two days ago, I happened exactly this. So I have the perfect example, and this is so weird. Uh-huh. This is so weird, you know. So uh-huh. he's not allowed to play or to watch uh, clips of too violent because I don't like that. Right. And even sure. even games that are like monsters, not yet. He's too young. He get very influenced right. by monsters as well. But for some reason, in, in some YouTube video of very cute things, there are advertising left and right. So he 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 asked me, uh, Papa, I want to I want to be part of a movie with Zelda. There is a video game called Zelda right now in oh, the yeah. town. Mm-hmm. And he saw the commercial somewhere, and and he liked it. And and for me, it was like, how how in the world you you follow this this game <laughs> that you don't have a control right. to play games? I don't allow right. you to watch videos about this game, but in somehow sure. he knew about the game and he want to do it. This is insane, you know. So today, it's very difficult to to control the media and the entertainment All because right. it's really coming from every single direction. So here we go. Two days oh, ago, he, he, he told me that he wants to be the, the little character in the Zelda video game. TV. Oh, it's my crazy. God. Look at that. that is, <laughs> it's funny, too. My kids do the same thing. They're older, and it's like they come home, and they're like, hey, don't you know about this, Mom? And I'm like, how do you even know about this? You know what I mean? And I'm a full-grown woman, and I'm thinking, where do they find this? The Internet can be helpful, but it can be kind of hazardous, folks, just so you know that. But I thought, yeah, because he's so little, that's got to be a cool experience to have the director slash writer dad at home, of course. And your wife, Rachel, now, is she in uh, collaboration with you, meaning is she a creative as well, or is she completely non-industry? Because oftentimes that's no, the case that, my, that your wife's not in. My, it's my balance of, in life, you know. She has nothing to nice. do with movies at all, zero. So oh, okay. It's like, uh, the, you know, I, and I like this. I like that when I come back home, she she's still in this world, you know, because sometimes entertainment right. that is full of promises, all promises, all promises, and our projects are like uh, – you know, it, it, our movies are like six, seven years before you, you mm-hmm. do a movie. You have project of the past, and sometimes it's the right moment. Sometimes you meet the right person. So everything is in the air, really. It's in the clouds, mm-hmm. like, like, like that. Oh, yeah. You know? And then, oh, I know. boom, something happened, and maybe a one meeting, one occasion, and, and you do the next step. And then you meet this actor, you do another step. So mm-hmm. it's... Um, it's a very del- illusional and del- del- delusional business. It can be very mm-hmm. dangerous, I think. 
Oh, definitely. So to have a family that is real, it helps a lot. It helps to refresh, reset your brain, you know, and mm-hmm. think about real stories because you can even get lost on things that are not important. And then, back, you know, you go back to the, to the family and you're like, wait a minute, what is important? What is important is mm-hmm. love, is family, yes. is your son. Yes. This, is, this is what is important in life. You know, I agree. And, and, 100%. A, a, big, a big master, you know, that I have, that is Francois Truffaut, that is a director from the past, from the Nouvelle Vague in France, uh, back in the, in the 60s, 70s. He said, what is more important, life or cinema? And this question, of course, was rhetorical, but he was because you need to understand that even if cinema and movie business is your life, like it is for me, are you really sure that real life is not more important than movies and cinema? Because Mm -hmm. it's from real life that you make movies and stories. It's not the other way around. Correct. So this is is something very important, I think, for a filmmaker. And you can lose your, your, you know, your control very easily, especially in this town, sure. in Los Angeles, you know. So it's oh, good God, to yeah. have a balance. I think I think filmmakers should have a balance, and they need to find their balance how they how they're able to to, to find. You know, I I surf that... one per week, for example, or I try to surf one time per week, and this is reset my balance as well. You know, I enter in the water, mm-hmm. I stay there. It's you and the water, nobody else. The waves are coming. You take one wave, you take another wave. And that in somehow reset my brain of every day. Oh, run left, take the car, go right. Hmm. This guy, he wants to fight with you. He wants to take advantage. This other guy need you, you know. Everybody use each mm-hmm. other. And, and boom, 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 boom. From 8 o'clock to 9 p.m., you go to sleep, wake up again. So when you surf, for me at least, you reset your brain and your body. And, and so gotcha. you're able, much fresher, to, to start again. I think every, every single person okay. is different. But, but they mm-hmm. need this balance for sure. Oh, no, I agree with you. And kind of like some of us get to go to places like I saw you did the whole Oscar after party thing. Way jealous. Oh, my God. I saw you in a little tuxedo, and I thought, how much fun was that, I wonder? Oh, my God. That must have been a blast for you all. It, it was a lot of fun. So we started the idea for, like, entertain the, the, the fans of Cyborgs, this TV show that we are doing, right. and, and they said, okay, I'm going to pick you up all, guys, all the actors of the, the main actors of the TV show. I have a big mm-hmm. car with seven seats, you know, a Q7. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I want all of you in my car, seven people, and we're going to go to party <laughs> together, and it's going to be fun. We're going to make some videos here and there. And, and, sure. and we did it, and it was a lot of fun because more you, more you create a family, uh, you know, like uh, an attachment with your actors, more you are like a group, are enthusiastic people together, and better is for the right. project, you know. I really believe in I, that. I really believe that, that you need to, how do you, how can you say that in English? You need to connect with your actors. And all these connectivity. little adventures, yes, all these little adventures, they help to connect with your beautiful actors, beautiful creatures. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. In fact, that's probably why, and and to you folks that are listening in, one of the things that I saw that is super cool is that you decide to do um, on and off Q&A sessions with the cast of the film. So randomly, they'll be doing question and answer sessions. That's awesome because I don't see a lot of directors that do that. That gives people exposure to the people, you know, the cast, get get accustomed to what they look like, who they are. That's a really neat concept. Have you done that for other films or is this just kind of the first test run you've had with the Q&A? Because it's great. This is the first time, in fact. This is the first okay. time, and I think, like you said, is related with, with new, you know, new technology, mm-hmm. new possibility. Now we have right. the possibility inside the project. They give us the tools to do live Q&A, and we are doing that. And, and actors are really happy about it because when they're doing a project, more people are interested in what they're doing and more pleasure they have, you know, because mm-hmm. it's in the nature of an actor. If, if you don't notice an actor, he will be sad because he wants to be mm-hmm. an actor to be noticed. So all this Q&A, people asking questions, 
they were very, very happy. And and me, like a father, because I feel like a father for, for these actors. Sure. You know, I'm like, oh, look at my son. He's, he's happy. That makes me happy as well. <laughs> That's neat. So <clears throat> I think it's something new. And I think it's, it's, a, it's really, really good to, um, like, um, gain more followers and gain more mm. people attention and <clears throat> and be able to explain more about the project you know and to know question that fans can actually ask by themselves you know if you have a doubt about a tv show think about it let's say that you are a big fan of the walking dead and now you mm-hmm. have a question you by yourself can you imagine right. if you can ask rick the main actor of the TV show, a question face by face, I think would be the right. coolest things ever. So oh, what? I, really doubt. Wish other, I really hope other TV show, even the big TV show, they can, they can do something like this because he will be very, very, very gorgeous, you know? I will be one of the guys calling these people. And that's, that's me too. <laughs> Being like, hey, can you answer my question? No, I totally think that's awesome, actually. And I saw, to you folks listening in, of course, Cyborgs, which we're going to talk about, which is a, a sci-fi television series. Now, I'm going to venture to guess, because I've seen on your wall and I've watched and looked at enough things to know, you must be a huge sci-fi guy, because I saw that you posted up this stuff about robot clones and things like that. So you must be really deep into the whole alien slash sci-fi thing as a person, not just the director, I'm guessing. So I am a big fan of post-apocalypse scenario. Okay. I'm not a big fan of aliens and, and sci-fi, that direction, but I am a big okay. fan of post-apocalypse scenario because for me it's very interesting to follow characters in a post-apocalypse scenario because everything reset. In our society today, we are so afraid of the opinion of other people that we are never, ever, ever ourselves in the world. If you think in a post-apocalypse scenario, there is no time and no meaning to act somebody else. So, mm-hmm. boom. In one, you know, one moment, you must be yourself, and you need to survive. For me, this is absolutely a pleasure. So, you can give me whatever you want. For me, everything is an excuse. Zombies, cyborgs, <laughs> robots, aliens, whatever is the reason for the for the post apocalypse scenario, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I I will accept all of them, you know? Nice. Is the okay. situation is the situation that I'm a big lover. Of course I, I am a big fan of the space, meaning that um, not necessarily aliens, but the space, what there is there, you know. I have a script that called Ulysses, that is the story mm-hmm. of, a, of a human that with the right technology is able to, to do a trip for infinity time in the space. And I'm a big fan of this concept, you know. I like the space mm-hmm. so much, and, and the unknown, we don't know. So who, whoever make a movie and give an explanation, he can be right because there are no, you know, uh, there are no explanations. So you can write whatever you want and you have the same possibility to be right of another person. I remember there was a, there sure. was a script that I read that somebody said, the universe is a, be- is a cell of a big animal and we are inside this cell. So we are hmm. part of, of a big animal. Well, if you think about it, and what we have proves and not proof, this explanation is good like any other explanation. <laughs> you know, sure. There are really no, no I... feedback to, to, to know who is right and who is, who is wrong. So I'm a big fan of that. Sure. But for me, gotcha. for, for Cyborgs, it was, the, it was the post-apocalypse scenario. I'm a big fan of post-apocalypse scenario. And start mm-hmm. from a reset and see what happened and follow my characters and, and, and follow them to survive to meet other human beings that finally they are their self, they're open their self to people, or maybe they don't. I really like I, I really like that. That is my my best. Gotcha. So I suppose then I, I should ask you, obviously, as the creator, let's do a little backdrop so people understand the premise behind cyborgs. Um, 
tell us a little bit about the, the summary, obviously, of course, and what are you hoping to have happen with this project? Meaning, would this be a short-term series? Are you looking to get it picked up, et cetera? Just so we all get a, a firm idea of the project itself and what you're looking to do. Yes. So the TV show is about um, – the beginning of the TV show is actually real, meaning that um, the technology is going so fast that sooner or later our body will be old facing the technology that we have in, a, in our world. So we need extension. We need to be updated, okay? okay. In today's world, you can, you can see that already with, with the phone. We are constantly in our phone. We are constantly in front of this little screen, meaning that right. if some people you will say, hey, listen, I'm going to integrate your iPhone to your arm. You don't need to recharge. You don't need nothing. And it's right there for all your life. You want to do it? I'm sure there are a lot of people that they would say yes. For how strange it may sound, we are already cyborgs. We are, you know, <laughs> and we don't even know. So ah. in the future, the story is like um, the technology will advance so fast that we will be able to create robot human clones, okay. meaning that we will be able to create robots that are exactly to humans, identical, oh my God. but they're stronger and they're faster. So what happened is our civilization is using these robots as slaves because <clears throat> if you have a robot, it's not a slave. It's not human. It's not conscious. So it's like a car. A car, you tell him where, you tell the car where to go, you park, you leave it there for a week. It doesn't have a feeling, so it's a machine. You don't feel to enslave a car because it's just an object. And with the robots, sure. we will do the same thing. You know, we create identical of humans, of aspect, everything. But because uh -huh. our robots, we will not feel of slaving them. So in our society, people will say, okay, take my dog outside, go to have grocery, and then go to fix the car, come back, do this and that, without be afraid of slaving them. But with the time, one day, the 14th of May of 2004, 2045, the robots mm -hmm. start to have conscience. So it's a small detail that changes everything. And the small detail, conscience to be alive. Because if I do a clone robot of a human and now mm -hmm. it's conscious to be alive, what's the difference? Because for, for what I know, we may be robots as well. We may be the experiment of a, of a very far civilization in, in the universe that decide to create humans from scratch. Because if you analyze our body, they are the perfect machine. Our eyes act like cameras. They have a you know, they open and close depending by the light. And our arms are like physical, like robots. Our resting during the night is like recharge the battery. So, and our regeneration part, you know, in an extent is, is, is like very, very physical and makes sense. We are the perfect machine, the perfect robot. Only the conscience of us being alive make us different from a machine. So at that point, when the robots are being conscious to be alive, the world enters in a chaos. And a big war starts between robots and humans. And of course, because the robots were stronger and faster, they won very easily. So ah. the world is over. There is an apocalypse war where the robots take, take over. And there are few humans alive because humans are like parasites of this planet. We are, after all. Oh, my we, God. We just take resources of, of this planet. That's it. Whatever you do, mm -hmm. you, you are taking resources of this planet. You can't avoid to be a parasite of this planet. But like gotcha. every single parasite, to completely destroy all of them is almost impossible. So there will be some humans in some underground vault that they survive and they create another civilization under the ground and the robots they don't know. And there mm -hmm. will be some other humans in the surface that they die and they're born, the son, the daughter. So there are some humans that they have no idea after 100 years of the end of the world in this way, they have no idea that there was a 
a previous civilization. So these humans in the surface are wild. But there are also humans underground in the vault organized that they know where they come from. So in our, in our um, universe, there are robots, there are humans in the surface that are wild humans, and there are humans sophisticated in the vault. With gotcha. the time, these okay. sophisticated men in, in, in the vault, they create something to fight back the robots. They were thinking, we can't create robots to fight robots because this will not work like we, we saw, mm-hmm. because they will take over mm-hmm. the robots, reprogram, and send it back. But what if we start from humans with real feelings, real emotion, and we put extension that are robotics so they will have strength and speed of a robot and in this way cyborgs are born a group of gotcha. cyborgs that they come from human bodies human people but with extension that are robotic and with this group of 10 cyborgs they start the fight back with robots and our TV show starts there what happened after that. And what I like is that ah. there are a lot of flashbacks of, of the past of these cyborgs. Who are these cyborgs? Why they become cyborgs, you know? What was that mm-hmm. place before the apocalypse, you know, and all this information. And then um, answering the, the, second, the second part of the question, you said, I would like to be a TV show. For now, the, I have the first season wrote, so there are 12 episodes plus the pilot, so 13 episode, episodes, 30 minutes long mm-hmm. each. So I would like to be, um, even a web series will be, will be nice because for me it will give me the possibility to explain this story. Of course, if a studio gotcha. step in and say, oh, let's do this in a different way and let's do a, a TV show or a video on demand online, whatever, it, it, it's fine because... It doesn't change your project where you're going to show. It's just make it better to give more details, to have more choices as a director. But your project as a TV show, as a series, can be uh, changed and, and uh, you know, be modified to be applied for every single, you know, uh, distribution that, that, that you, you want to do it. Sure. No, I can tell. Now, what step of the process are you in, obviously? Because I know you had your initial campaign, obviously, to raise funds for this. So tell the folks where your project stands right now. Okay. So what happened is we have 42 days, and we raised $36,000. And then uh, an investor with a production company that everybody knows, it's a, it's a pretty big production company, step in and said, Leo, we want to take care about this project. But we don't want other producers involved. And um, so they took care in that, from that moment, and we were obligated to cancel the, the Kickstarter because they didn't want any other partner. But then after we did that, <clears throat> some backers said, hey, listen, I still want my price. I want my T-shirt. <laughs> I want ah, my, gotcha. my Blu-ray. <laughs> So we went back to the producer and we said, can we launch again another campaign where we go just the rewards to the fans and say, yeah, yeah, go on and don't put producer rewards, actors reward. Because in the beginning, Kickstarter, there was like, you can be one of the cyborg if you want. You can be a producer if you invest a big amount of money. So we canceled that rewards because we cannot give it anymore. But we are able to give like a poster, signed by the actor, a DVD, a Blu-ray. So right now we are in the second campaign, let's say. And um, I'm shooting next week. So okay. next week we start to shoot uh, to finish the pilot. Uh, we have a big, big fight scene on cables and green screen that require a lot oh, of nice. preparation. Yeah. Okay. And we shot already 60 uh, I would say 70% of the pilot. What is remaining is some some extra scene and this big fight scene. And I okay. think uh, in three weeks we are able to to finish. Right now I'm polish the script again, and next week I'm gonna shoot 
the rest of the pilot with this new producer. What we do from there, <coughs> we are starting a web series with this producer, but at the same time, he wants to pitch the idea to the big studios. So we're gonna actually we're going to uh, follow in two different directions. One is already public out you know uh, out there. You can go to the website and watch the episode. But at the same time, this producer, at the same time we are producing the shows and the episode one after another one. He will go around the studios and pitch and say, "Hey, look, this TV show works." They found the money from the fan base, $36,000, that is not common sure. for, for something from zero. They have fans mm-hmm. already. They involve it. They have a lot of uh, social media followers. They're ready to go the next step. And they're gotcha. already producing the TV show. So if you guys want to, to, to put it in the next level, we can do it because we did the, all the development work for you. Right. So basically what we did really, we did all the research and develop job already for free for a studio. So in this gotcha. way, if they invest on us, they will save a lot of money of pre-production and develop of, of, of the show, basically. And this is what we try to do. Gotcha. I understand. Now, if folks want to, um, I know that you have the Kickstarter campaign up that they can go till now until that's April 5th, right? The the page with the perks on it is listed. That's going till April 5th. Is that correct? I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, the first Kickstarter is over, but the second Kickstarter for the rewards, if people want to be involved, uh, it's it's still there. It's open. You go to 00cyborgs.com and automatically you can go to the to the campaign and you can choose the rewards you can follow the Q&A there are a lot of interesting stretch goals as well for the fans right. and the supporter for example we will publish the picture of the bakers and we will put in a poster and the cyborgs in one of the episodes that will find the poster i think this is this is gorgeous you know in the tv show they will find this poster that they will say legendary bakers and they have no clue what they are, but there are the picture mm-hmm. of the backers. And if some backers, they don't want to give the picture of themselves, of their dog or their sister, they're able to do it. Right. So we try to do interaction between the fans and the, and the TV show and the actors, you know. And there are stretch sure. goals. So every single time you go over $1,000, $2,000, $2,000, it unlock, unlock a new reward. The first reward was a party where we will have a visual connection between bakers and, and the actors, and they can ask questions and whatever they want. And the second one was this picture that they found in the TV show in the episode three, I believe. So I, I think okay. it's a lot of fun. All of these interactions. Definitely. I wish they were there when I was a teenager. You know, I would have so much right. fun <laughs> to do that. That would be cool. Now, folks, you know that he knows what he's doing here because those that don't know you, obviously, you have had eight wins to the film festival circuit, 12 film festivals where you've been selected. You've written 13 projects. You've directed 18. I guess my question to you is I don't want to forget to mention these two because I happen to look and see, and I want to do a status on these two uh, productions. Just checking with you um, one more time. I know last I checked was in post-production. Any idea as to when that's going to be completed and done? Which one? Which one? The film one more time. That's listed oh, in post production on your yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no idea because um, when <laughs> when you when the investment in one project stop, right. you basically need to follow other projects that they get more funds and more more ah. investments. Project is I own that project, so meaning that nobody mm-hmm. can can steal that project from me. The only sure. owners of that project is me. One okay. day I will finish that project, but I need free time to do it because before ah. I need to do other things that they're able to, you know, to, to, to get me going. And, sure. and one day I will finish the project, I promise. I, I'm, really <laughs> okay. I'm really attached in that movie because one of the actors is Otto Jensen, that is a friend of ah. mine, an actor from Burbank that, is, that he was 100 years old and he died. So I'm really oh. attached to that picture because it's his last movie. So okay. I'm going to finish that movie right, and there is a lot of post-production to do it. So he will be beautiful for that. I'm sure that he will be very personal and very beautiful. 
I just mm-hmm. don't know the date of the uh, of, okay. of, of the accomplish. Yeah, that's but, all right. Uh, I just wanted to double sure. check. Yeah, yeah, it's a personal project. Otto Jensen is in that movie, so I, I need to do it very, very well, and, and I will. I need, I promise, you know, I promise to 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 the actor as well, to Otto Jensen as well, that is not here anymore. So sure. I will take care. I just need uh, the right moment to do it. I understand. I do. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and read through all these different ways where people can find you. So I'll let you rest for just a second. Let me get to the whole list. And then when I'm done, let me know if I've forgotten anything. Um, so the gentleman I've been talking to, of course, his name is Leonardo and it's, it's Corbucci is the last name. Did I spell that right or say it right? Cor- Corbucci? Perfect, perfect, is that right? Perfect. Okay, good. Perfect. He can be found on the following places. Um, he is uh, obviously IMDb, Vimeo, YouTube, Wikipedia. The website is actually his name, LeonardoCorbucci.com. Um, okay, so now the handles. Uh, if you go to Kickstarter.com, and I have that actually on my personal page as well as on um, the show page for Sin's Chat Corner, you'll see the Kickstarter campaign, which is 00cyborgs.com. Then, for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, here comes all the handles. For Facebook, he has a personal page, and it's Leonardo, and the last name is spelled C-O-R-B-U-C-C-I. He also has one for Leonardo Corbucci, director. And then, of course, for the project, it's 00cyborgs. For Twitter, he is at Leo underscore Corbucci, and then, of course, Cyborg underscore 0010. And for Instagram, Leonardo underscore Corbucci, and, of course, 00 Cyborgs. Did I forget anything? Oh, so many things. No, you didn't forget anything. It's very simple to to be attached to the to the followers with 00cyborgs.com, driving right. you right there to the starter. And even with $1, just $1, you will trick on – the exclusive video diary uh, of the backers. And I think that's, oh, the, cool. that's the best part. I think every single day, every single day for 60 days, I'm going to do a diary of this production every single oh, cool. day. So every single day I do one minute of updates. I can be with the actors. I can be on location scout. I can be in the studios to check it out. I can be with the editor, with the stunt coordinator, Every single day is a video diary. I think it's very, very good for filmmakers as well that they want to mm-hmm. see the develop of an independent project. They will be able to see 60 small little videos every day of how, how, you know, how a TV show gets uh, produced, basically. So one That's dollar awesome. will treat the exclusive video diary. And then another That's thing awesome. that I need to say is that mm-hmm. without my actors group this will never happen so this tv show Mm. differently from any other project i did i need to give the all um you know the all uh, price and reward the all merit of the actors that i involve they're a young group um but they are absolutely the reason why this tv show exists and they're all the cyborg. You know, the cyborg, the name of the cyborg mm-hmm. are C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and especially C10, that is the main, uh, the main character, Harry Hall, mm-hmm. is absolutely his merit if all these TV shows start. Because in the beginning, more than six months ago, we start shoot and, and uh, uh, nobody knew nothing about this project. And I just told him, come here, let's go to this storage place, hmm. This is your script. Look at here. Look at left. So he believed me 100% without nothing, nothing, no information at all. And, and, and this, is in, this is crazy, you know, for an actor to be so devoted to a, to a director and a project. I really need to give all the merit to Harry Holmes, my, my first main actor, and all the other cyborgs. It, this is their TV show. Not mine. I bet. They are the best. That's wonderful. And they, and they deserve everything from now on that this TV show will bring. That's it. That is awesome. Absolutely. Well, my goodness, this hour has gone by so quickly. I'm so glad that you came on, and I feel so blessed to have you. You, You're just such a modicum of talent. And I was just sitting here, and I'm thinking to myself, because I heard your time schedule, and I'm like, I wonder if I could convince him to, you know, I have my film festival. My film festival is actually coming up in June in New York City. Obviously, it's a film festival. However, there are components 
relative to film in there. And so I thought to myself, you know what, you and I should probably have a conversation outside of the show and talk about how in some way we can incorporate your work into the festival, just because I'd be disappointed I if I didn't to. have something yeah, of yours. You so that would be it. so cool. Definitely. I'll, when we get off here, I'll make sure that um, when I send you the link for the show, because by the way, it takes about two hours for the show to archive. So once it gets done, give it about two hours. I'll send you the link. I'll send you the information on the festival. I wish that you weren't LA based and more in New York, because obviously, of course, I'd snatch you up immediately and have you on a panel. I can guarantee you that because you fit the writer panel, you fit the director panel. I'm like, you would be a wonderful addition if you want to start down far away. Oh. All the good people are in L.A. sometimes, and that kind of sucks, but that's okay. Because one day I'm going to have a big budget, and I'm going to be able to fly you all out there and say, now you are going to come to my festival, but we're broke. It's our first year, so of course you know how that is. In the first year until you get things really rolling, you're broke. It'll be in New York, actually, the Producers Club. Mm -hmm. But I love New York. Every single excuse to go to New York, I love it. Exactly. That's right. See, we have to talk about that. I feel like I am a New Yorker, you know. I think when you spend more right? than one month in that city, you become a New Yorker. <laughs> right. Exactly. See, I understand how I feel, too. That's exactly right. I have a huge love of New York City. So I thought, well, my festival belongs in New York City, of course. And so I'm, I'm moving there in seven years anyway. So I'm like, this is kind of a nice segue. I'm getting used to being here in Milwaukee. I've been here my whole life. Now it's time. I'm in entertainment, so let's move to where it's going to be vital. So yeah, I'll, um, when we wrap up, like I said, give it a couple hours. I'll send you the link. I'll send you the information. Please consider participating. I, w- I would really feel very blessed if you would allow me the opportunity to share your word with others, because I think you're just a huge I talent. would be so happy Spaghetti to do English. it. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Well, I will let you go, because I know that you were driving. You actually had to stop and pull over just to do this. So thank you for giving me a good hour's worth of your time. Folks, before I forget, the campaign is up on my page, obviously, and my show page as well, clearly, certainly. And don't be a stranger, my dear. If you want to come back and promote any and all your projects, just come on back on my door whenever you want, anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the space, and thank you so of much course. for letting me explain what we're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank of you. Of course. I'll be in touch, my dear. You have a great afternoon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Wasn't he wonderful? Oh, my gosh. Those Italian people are lovely. So, uh, And my great thanks to Leonardo, of course, obviously, for taking an hour out of his day to come on the show. Thanks so much to all of you listeners, too. Without you guys, we certainly wouldn't have a show. One more time in the roundup, his name again is Leonardo Carbucci. He is on YouTube, Wikipedia, IMDb, Vimeo. The website is LeonardoCarbucci.com. Uh, Kickstarter.com, look for 00cyborgs.com. That's the perk project, meaning they've raised the funds that they want to give you the perks. Um, Facebook, he has a personal page as well as a director page and 00cyborg. Twitter is at B-O underscore Corbucci and then cyborg underscore 0010. And on Instagram, it's Leonardo underscore Corbucci and 00cyborgs. Again, my very deepest thanks to the lovely director that he is, Leonardo, to you folks for listening in and having some patience as I went on and on today. Like I said, tomorrow's show is, um, is preliminary, meaning that we're going under the guise that, yes, I'm still going to be online and live. Check with details on this as relative to my show page. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Uh, it sounds like I might have a date with my daughter finally this evening. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, so if we don't get a chance to talk to you tonight, uh, tune in tomorrow. Take care, guys. It's fall, the geese are headed south, and it's time for you to hit the woods. So button things up, find where they hide, and pattern the deer you seek. Come into Cabela's Great Outdoor Days and save over 20% on Herder's Select Grade Handgun Ammo. Save $180 after mail-in rebate on Walther PPS M2 pistols with instant savings of $80. And get a Vortex Diamondback 3.5 to 10 by 50 V-Plex rifle scope, just $149.99. Shop in-store and at cabelas.com. It's fall, the geese are headed south, and it's time for you to hit the woods. So button things up, find where they hide, and pattern the deer you seek. Come into Cabela's Great Outdoor Days and save over 20% on Herder's Select Grade Handgun Ammo. Save $180 after mail-in rebate on Walther PPS M2 pistols with instant savings of $80. And get a Vortex Diamondback 3.5 to 10 by 50 V-Plex rifle scope, just $149.99. Shop in-store and at cabelas.com.